If you could define happiness for you, what would that be? It's overcoming yourself at, at all costs, whatever that takes. To be at the point of your life where you don't care about being judged, you can be in a room of a million people and they all hate you, and you walk in and you go like this. Because not because you're angry at them, because you know yourself inside and out, and you know that you've put yourself to hell to be where you're at today. You've walked the walk, you've talked the talk, and you've walked the walk. And that's to me what it's all about. It's all about putting those boots on the ground and getting after it every day. And once you do that, you have a feeling about yourself that no one can ever take away or even understand. We all have one thing in common. We are here, stuck in the game of life, often subject to the whims of forces beyond our control. But we never train for it. We dedicate ourselves to external goals, whether they are rooted in fitness or school or work, as if they are isolated events, somehow disconnected from the totality of our lives, when everything we do is an opportunity to get better at the game of life itself. My life and my commitment to do what needs to be done, I am a student of life. I carry around a notebook. I keep logs. I study all the upswings and down currents of my days as if the final exam is tomorrow. Because we all have an exam tomorrow. Whether we realize it or not, every interaction, each task is a reflection of your mindset values and future prospects it's an opportunity to be the person you've always wanted to be you don't have to have survived trauma or become a physical beast to train for life we've all been challenged physically emotionally and intellectually and we've all failed don't be shy about digging through your lost archives no matter how irrelevant those experiences seem now they count if you could define happiness for you, what would that be? It's overcoming yourself at, at all costs, whatever that takes. To be at the point of your life where you don't care about being judged. You can be in a room of a million people and they all hate you. And you walk in and you go like this. Because not because you're angry at them, because you know yourself inside and out. And you know that you've put yourself to hell to be where you're at today. You've walked the walk. You've talked the talk and you've walked the walk. And that's to me what it's all about. It's all about putting those boots on the ground and getting after it every day. And once you do that, you have a feeling about yourself that no one can ever take away or even understand. We all have one thing in common. We are here, stuck in the game of life, often subject to the whims of forces beyond our control but we never train for it. We dedicate ourselves to external goals, whether they are rooted in fitness or school or work, as if they are isolated events, somehow disconnected from the totality of our lives, when everything we do is an opportunity to get better at the game of life itself. My life and my commitment to do what needs to be done, I am a student of life. I carry around a notebook. I keep logs. I study all the upswings and down currents of my days as if the final exam is tomorrow because we all have an exam tomorrow. Whether we realize it or not, every interaction, each task is a reflection of your mindset, values, and future prospects. It's an opportunity to be the person you've always wanted to be. You don't have to have survived trauma or become a physical beast to train for life. We've all been challenged physically, emotionally, and intellectually, and we've all failed. Don't be shy about digging through your lost archives. No matter how irrelevant those experiences seem now, they count because they were all dry runs for whatever comes next. This awareness that everything we do is merely training for the next episode is like a filter that expands your perception. When you get assigned something at work or school that you don't want to do, step into a conflict you didn't see coming, someone close to you gets sick or dies or 
a relationship falters, you will see these challenges as new chapters in life's textbook, which you can study to make sure that the next season of loss won't be such a kick in the knees. Not just for you, but more so for the people around you. We all know that training is required to make the cut in competitive sports. Get into the best schools and compete for the most coveted jobs because that's what it takes to be prepared. Most of this generation quits the second they get talked to. You did this wrong, you did this wrong, or, or they get yelled at. It's so easy to, you know, to, to be great nowadays because everybody else is, most people are, are weak. This, this is a softened generation. So if you have any mental toughness, any, any ability, if you have any fraction of self-discipline, the ability to not want to do it, but still do it. People have a, a hard thing to understand. I hate to run. And, and, and what makes me so crazy, it doesn't need more, is people go, well, well, why do you run if you hate it? What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't want to take showers and eat either. I hate that too. The, the whole, the, that's life, man. That, and and, and, and it, it wasn't until I changed that mentality that I became somebody. I hated going to school. So guess what? I was dumb as shit. That's what, it, one plus one is two. But if you can get through to doing things that you hate to do, on the other side is greatness. That's what people don't understand. By me running, I am callous in my mind. I'm not training for a race. I'm training for life. I'm training for the time when I get that two o'clock in the morning call that my mom is dead or something happens tragic in life. I don't fall apart. I'm training my mind and my body and my spirit so it's all one so I can handle what life is going to throw at me because the life I've lived, it throws a whole bunch at you. And if you're not physically and mentally prepared for that, you're just going to crumble and you're good for nobody. You said I can be me. The second you said I can cuss and be me and cussing, people I say, man, you cuss all the time, why? <laughs> well, I hate to say it, the best way for me to get how I feel across, I can't sit here and say, you know what, yeah, I went through Hell Week and man, it was, it was really hard. <laughs> no, that <laughs> takes your damn soul, rips it inside out, and then they say, now we're going to start. It, it, it allows me to express where I was at, at a point of my life. If I don't give you all of me, why the hell am I here? Why, how will you learn from me? People take so much offense to me. You will never learn from people if we always tap dance around the truth. We tap dance around the truth by finding the right words so I don't hurt you because you have thin skin. No, tighten up, people. The only thing more infectious than a good attitude is a bad one. The more you dwell on the negative, the weaker you feel, and that weakness infects those around you. However, the reverse is also true. I knew that if I could control my attitude and redirect my attention, I'd gain control of the entire situation. I was disappointed, but I wasn't surprised that my knee gave out. Now, it was on me to learn what I could from the setback, adapt, and move forward. It's an unwritten natural law of the universe that you will be tested. You will get smacked in the f***ing face. A hurricane will land on your head. It's inevitable for all of us. Yet, we are not formally taught how to handle unexpected adversity. We have sex education, fire drills, active shooter drills, and curriculum on the dangers of alcohol and drugs. But there is no rug just got pulled out under you class, nobody teaches how to think, act, and move when disappointment, bad news, malfunction, and disaster inevitably strike. All the advice floods in only after we are already lying dazed on the canvas, which means it's up to you to cultivate your own strategy and have the discipline to practice it. Mine is simple. No matter what life serves me, I say, Roger that. Most people think, Roger that, simply means order received. However, in the military, some people infuse Roger with a bit more intention and define it as received. Order given, expect results. When used that way, it is so much more than an acknowledgement. It's an accelerant. It bypasses the over 
analytical brain and stimulates action because in some situations thinking is the enemy i'm not suggesting that you should follow every order like a robot after you've been knocked down it's important to take some time to understand what happened and strategize your way forward but you also must act if you stay stalled out sifting through the wreckage you may find that you've been swallowed by it we all love comeback stories because they teach us that setbacks have the power to propel us forward to our greatest successes but your fate depends on your approach after an injury or failure your mind wants to either spin out into overthinking or fall back into numbness and complacency and it takes practice to short circuit that process Roger that is a ticket back to your life no matter what happens you may be laid off run down flunked out cut or dumped you could be a stressed out bullied young kid an overweight veteran with no prospects or simply handed a pair of crutches and told to sit tight on the sidelines for as long as it takes to heal the answer is always Roger that scream it out loud tell them all that you heard what they had to say and that they can expect your very best in return and don't forget to smile a smile that reminds them that you are most dangerous when you're cornered that is how you respond to a setback it's the most efficient way to deal with adversity and come out clean we all have, but we we go we go we go i start talking to my fiance hey i'm doing too much you start now like like i did in hell week like i do all the time your one second decision it's that decision when your mind starts to get so amped up whenever you can't hear yourself think you got to slow down whenever you're living off a schedule every day is a schedule every day is a schedule you have no time for yourself when you start and we all know it i don't have time for this anymore i have time for that anymore that's when your mind and your body are saying think about that i'm neglecting my fiance i'm neglecting my disciplines of life I'm neglecting my reading, my learning, my my workouts, my 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 diet. When you start neglecting all of that. You neglect one of them. You can you can neglect all of them a long time. It's going to haunt you. When you start seeing that my god, I haven't eaten right in a long time. I haven't been sleeping right in a long time. It can only be one of those things to take you off. So I'm 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 very aware of my eating, my sleeping, my 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 disciplines of life. And I started to get too far away from them. It's a hard stop. Because what made me me are the self, not just disciplines, the self disciplines of life. And those are always in front of you if you have any. They're always in front of you. So that's so that's my hard stop. I'm afraid a lot, but I've learned to flip fear by facing whatever it is I'm scared of head on. When I first started to face my fears, I was tentative as that's normal and the emotions and discomfort i felt were proof of how potent this process can be
If you could define happiness for you, what would that be? It's overcoming yourself at, at all costs, whatever that takes. To be at the point of your life where you don't care about being judged. You can be in a room of a million people and they all hate you. And you walk in and you go like this. Because not because you're angry at them, because you know yourself inside and out and you know that you've put yourself to hell to be where you're at today you've walked the walk you've talked the talk and you've walked the walk and that's to me what it's all about it's all about putting those boots on the ground and getting after it every day and once you do that you have a feeling about yourself that no one can ever take away or even understand we all have one thing in common we are here stuck in the game of life, often subject to the whims of forces beyond our control. But we never train for it. We dedicate ourselves to external goals, whether they are rooted in fitness or school or work, as if they are isolated events, somehow disconnected from the totality of our lives, when everything we do is an opportunity to get better at the game of life itself. My life and my commitment to do what needs to be done, I am a student of life. I carry around a notebook. I keep logs. I study all the upswings and down currents of my days as if the final exam is tomorrow because we all have an exam tomorrow. Whether we realize it or not, every interaction, each task is a reflection of your mindset, values, and future prospects. It's an opportunity to be the person you've always wanted to be. You don't have to have survived trauma or become a physical beast to train for life. We've all been challenged physically, emotionally, and intellectually, and we've all failed. Don't be shy about digging through your lost archives. No matter how irrelevant those experiences seem now, they count if you could define happiness for you, what would that be? It's overcoming yourself at, at all costs, whatever that takes. To be at the point of your life where you don't care about being judged. You can be in a room of a million people and they all hate you. And you walk in and you go like this. Because not because you're angry at them, because you know yourself. Inside and out. And you know that you've put yourself to hell to be where you're at today. You've walked the walk. You've talked the talk and you've walked the walk. And that's to me what it's all about. It's all about putting those boots on the ground and getting after it every day. And once you do that, you have a feeling about yourself that no one can ever take away or even understand. We all have one thing in common. We are here stuck in the game of life, often subject to the whims of forces beyond our control but we never train for it. We dedicate ourselves to external goals, whether they are rooted in fitness or school or work, as if they are